No matter how close we look, we can't see the hour and minute hands on the clock move. We know they do, however, and when we look later, we're not surprised to find they've traveled around the dial. In the sky, the sun seems to stand still. But we know the Earth is constantly rotating, and in a few hours, the sun will slip below the horizon. When changes happen slowly, we may not perceive them at that moment, but that doesn't mean they're not occurring. Silica can accumulate so slowly in the lungs that an unprotected worker may not realize what's happening. It's only later, after significant damage is done, that it becomes obvious. Fortunately, by taking the proper precautions, you can avoid ever experiencing the debilitating illnesses caused by breathing in silica dust. In this program, we'll discuss silica's risks, a healthy work environment, and best work practices. Silica is the second most common mineral found in the Earth's crust. One form of silica, called crystalline silica, can be a serious health hazard. Crystalline silica is found in lots of places in nature and industry, including mineral deposits, rock and stone, granite, sandstone, slate, cement mortar, concrete, brick, and blasting abrasives. If crystalline silica is so common and also dangerous, why aren't we all sick from it? Because it only becomes dangerous when it's turned into dust and breathed in. In certain industries, this poses a real risk. According to the Center for Disease Control, at least 1.7 million U.S. workers are exposed to respirable crystalline silica in occupations such as construction, sandblasting, and mining. If precautions aren't taken to protect these workers, they can face a number of life-threatening illnesses, including cancer, tuberculosis, and autoimmune diseases. But the illness most closely tied to silica is silicosis. Silicosis is a lung disease that kills more than 250 workers in the United States each year and disables many more. It's caused when breathed-in crystalline silica dust settles in the lungs. Over time, as the silica accumulates, the lungs become inflamed and scar tissue forms. At first, an affected worker doesn't experience symptoms, but as the scarring gets worse, the lungs stiffen and have an increasingly difficult time extracting oxygen from the air that's breathed in. Then symptoms do begin showing up, including shortness of breath, tiring easily, and chronic coughing. If exposures to crystalline silica continue, the health problems inevitably grow more severe. How long does it take for symptoms to develop? That depends on how concentrated a worker's exposure to silica is. Silicosis is divided into three categories, chronic, accelerated, and acute silicosis. The most common form of the illness is chronic silicosis. Typically, chronic silicosis takes 10 to 20 years to develop and occurs when a worker is exposed to low amounts of silica over a long time period. Because a chest x-ray may not reveal any signs of the illness in its early stages, a worker can have chronic silicosis for years before it's diagnosed. The second category, accelerated silicosis, sometimes called progressive massive fibrosis, occurs when a worker is exposed to higher levels of silica. Because the worker is breathing in more silica, symptoms take only five to 10 years to develop. The rarest form of the illness, acute silicosis, occurs when a worker experiences a short-term exposure of extremely high levels of silica. Symptoms of acute silicosis can develop very rapidly within only a few weeks or may take up to five years to appear. At its worst, death from acute silicosis can occur within a few months, with the lungs literally drowning in their own fluids. Unfortunately, if a worker does develop silicosis, there is no cure. Once the lungs are scarred, the damage is irreversible. Because there is no effective treatment for silicosis, knowing how to protect yourself when working around silica dust is critical. And that's the good news. Silicosis and other illnesses associated with crystalline silica are 100% preventable. According to OSHA, there is potential for danger only when crystalline silica particles are in the air. There may be materials that contain silica, but if the operations on those materials do not generate dust, there is little chance of inhaling silica. 
So the danger occurs when materials that contain crystalline silica are drilled, sawed, crushed, or worked on in some other way that creates dust. But when determining if you're at risk, it's also important to remember that there may be silica particles in the air even though you don't see them. In other words, your senses alone won't tell you if you're being exposed to hazardous levels of silica. For an accurate assessment of airborne silica levels, employers rely on air monitoring. By collecting air samples and analyzing them, it can be determined if workers are exposed to crystalline silica levels above OSHA's PEL or permissible exposure limit. This is the maximum amount of crystalline silica that is considered safe during an eight-hour shift. If exposure levels are over the PEL, then action must be taken to bring them down. Whenever possible, the best way to reduce or eliminate employee exposures is through engineering and work practice controls. An example of an engineering control is to enclose work processes so that dust can't escape. Other controls may include switching to materials that don't contain crystalline silica, using local exhaust ventilation systems, and employing wet drilling or sawing to reduce the amount of dust that gets kicked into the air. In some situations, however, controls either won't work or can't bring dust levels down far enough. When this is the case, personal protective equipment is required. Since we're talking about protecting the lungs, choosing an appropriate respirator and using it properly are absolutely critical for adequate protection. If you need a respirator for your job, your employer will help select one based on the amount of silica dust in the atmosphere, as well as the type of work being performed. They'll also provide a fit testing procedure. A fit test makes sure that the respirator fits the contours of your face snugly so that dust can't enter along the sides of the mask. After that, it's up to you to don the mask properly when it's needed. While safety measures like these help protect your health, the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, also recommends that employees who work around silica receive regular medical exams. Because the number one health concern from silica exposure, silicosis, is difficult to detect in its early stages, medical monitoring helps ensure that health problems aren't developing that you're unaware of. A full exam should include a chest x-ray and lung function test. NIOSH recommends that the first exam takes place before starting the job. After this, exam should be given at least once every three years. Air monitoring, engineering controls, respirator selection. Up to now, we focused primarily on ways that your employer provides a safer work environment. Now, Let's look at day-to-day -day activities, those best work practices that employees use to keep themselves safe while on the job. Of course, the first step in protecting yourself is knowing whether the materials you're working with pose a risk. To help you determine this, any material that contains more than 0.1% crystalline silica must meet the information requirements of the hazard communication standard. In other words, these materials must be properly labeled and a Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, must be available at your job location. Before working with any new materials, read over all labels and MSDSs so that you know what risks are present and how to proceed safely. Awareness is key to staying safe. Know in which areas of your facility crystalline silica exposure is a possibility and the specific operations that create hazardous dust, then take the appropriate precautions. At the start of your shift, changing into disposable or washable clothes will make it easier to leave the dust safely behind at the end of the day. Always wear the correct PPE for the task you're performing. Depending on the activity you're involved in, this may include a hard hat, gloves, hearing protection, eye and face protection, and shoes with reinforced toes or other protective qualities. Of course, where silica is present, this may also include a respirator. Always wear the appropriate respirator for your work environment and exposure level. Don't make the mistake of thinking a cloth such as a bandana or t-shirt pulled over your nose and mouth will protect you. These provide little or no respiratory protection. Before donning your respirator, inspect it. Check for tears, cracks, broken straps, or any other damage that may impair the respirator's ability to protect you. Each time you don the respirator, perform a seal check. Different masks may require slightly different procedures, but typically, during a seal check, you'll block the respirator's air inlets with your hand and either inhale or exhale into the mask. If air escapes around the sides of the mask, readjust the respirator's position on your face until a good seal is achieved. 
Be aware that beards and mustaches can interfere with a respirator's seal, reducing the respirator's effectiveness. Never go into a hazardous atmosphere with a respirator that is damaged or that doesn't provide an airtight seal. Either will expose you to the hazard you're trying to avoid. At the end of your shift, always clean and store your mask properly to ensure that it will continue to protect you in the future. If you have questions about specific respirators used at your facility, ask your supervisor or safety professional. When working with silica, remember this rule of thumb. If you don't see any dust, you may still be at risk, but if you can see dust, you're almost definitely at risk. Whenever possible, avoid standing in a visible cloud of dust. If your job takes you outside, park your vehicle where it won't become contaminated with silica, and while working, try to position yourself upwind from any sources of silica dust. Maintaining a safer work environment means minimizing silica dust wherever possible and reducing the amount of dust that gets into the air. Engineering controls are intended to help with this, so make sure those controls are well maintained and tell your employer if control systems do not seem to be working properly. Good housekeeping practices and personal hygiene are also critical to eliminating silica exposure. As much as possible, keep exposed surfaces in your work area free of silica dust, but use cleaning methods that won't throw dust into the air. For example, clean up using wet sweeping, a water hose, or a vacuum with a high-efficiency particulate filter, as opposed to techniques such as dry sweeping or compressed air that scatter the fine dust. Do not eat, drink, smoke, or apply cosmetics in areas where crystalline silica dust is present. Instead, first move out of the exposure area and thoroughly wash your face and hands before engaging in any of these activities. To further protect your health, consider giving up smoking altogether since smoking adds to the damage caused by inhaling silica dust. At the end of your workday, if possible, shower at the work site and change into clean clothing to prevent contaminating other work areas, your vehicle, or your home. While silica is a serious health hazard in many work environments, the prevention methods outlined in this program work. Since OSHA first implemented regulations to control silica exposure, instances of silicosis have declined. Next time you step onto a job site where silica is present, reduce your risk of silica-related health problems by remembering to participate in educational and health programs provided by your employer. Read all relevant label and MSDS information for the materials you'll be working with. Know areas and operations where crystalline silica exposure is a possibility. Make sure all engineering controls are functioning properly. Use appropriate PPE when needed. Avoid dust clouds and working downwind from silica operations. If a respirator is required, follow the manufacturer's instructions for the proper donning and use. Reduce exposure risks through good housekeeping and personal hygiene practices. And finally, if you have any questions about silica exposure or other health-related issues, ask your supervisor or safety professional. The illnesses caused by breathing in silica may take time to develop, but they're too serious to ignore. To help ensure that your lungs stay healthy into the future, choose every day to work safely around silica. <laughs>